Welcome back to the channel. Tonight, uh, I'm gonna throw the intake manifold on this 258. Um, we get the studs mounted inside the head and then put that in, show you that process. And then we are going to bolt up the header. And then we may get the carb on tonight, not real sure. I'm kind of pressed on time this evening. So well, with that being said, let's jump right in. Been a few days since I've been back at this project here. So I just went ahead and stuffed a bunch of paper towels inside the intake and exhaust ports just to keep them, you know, clean as much as possible. Keep the big stuff out. So I think for peace of mind. comes in this macro kit. The macro kit's junk, but I do like their taps are junk, I should say. But I really like their uh, their ratchet for their um, tap and die setup here. And I'll show you that in a second. So that's a get that on camera. That's a uh, three eighths by sixteen. So. Oh, those are good to go. They got great th thread gauges. <clears throat> I mean, I don't know how hard it is to really screw up a thread gauge, but... Um, and their ratchet for their tap and die setup is primo. I really like it. The taps are junk. I'll probably screw one up just doing this, but... Uh, yeah, I'll get those over here right now. So this is their little ratchet. I really, really like this. You know, forward and back. And then um, their holders are nice. It's got a nice detent inside that ratchet that keeps your tap, I would say holder or guide or whatever you want to call that in there. Really like that. Like I said, the taps are worth bringing home. Now, typically when I run any tap, you know, I just lube her up a little bit. This is just cutting oil, cutting fluid. It's technically not even an oil, it's just a fluid. But give it a little bit of juice in there. I got a stud in that one, so I'll have to figure that out here in a minute.
Never hurts to run one through here, even if they look good. You know what you got that way. So I'm gonna buzz through these real quick. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve to do. And then I'll bring you back. Alright, so I'm going to hit these with a little bit of uh, anti-seize before I run them into the head. It doesn't call for it or anything, but it's peace of mind on my part. Um, you can't go wrong with anti-seize. There's a couple things you shouldn't use it on, but for the most part, I use this every single day. Just depends on what you're doing and whatnot. So I'm just gonna run a couple of these in. Try to get the big stuff off, but I'm gonna run a couple of these in, and then uh, we will. Um, we gotta pull these alignment dowels that are inside the head right there for the stock intake and manifold. The six to eight. Clifford kit, the intake manifold won't let you, uh, intake and header setup will not fit with those alignment dowels in there. Their instructions are great. They're really good. They, uh, they have a nice, um, written out instructions for you, but, uh, and they tell you right there in the book, you know, don't, don't, don't hesitate. Like if you have any questions, give, give Larry a shout. If he's the, pretty sure he's the only Minus maybe one other guy. But he's one I've dealt with from the beginning. From questions to ordering to problems with shipping. And I mean, he's on the paperwork from the beginning to the end. So not a very big outfit, but good quality stuff. We're actually running to a... Uh, we're jumping up to a... Uh, shit, the, uh, we're... We're going to use a, that Clifford intake is actually water-cooled. So you have to run water into that bugger. So, but like I said, I'm just going to get these things finger tight in here. And I'll go back through. I don't have my stud installer for some reason. Can't find it. It'll make life a lot easier than double nut and everything, but... I'll go through and double nut and torque these down. They don't give you a torque rating for the stud itself, which is fine. Just use your head kind of thing. And I know a few of you guys are probably thinking, well, you didn't use a... You used the wrong tap to clean those threads. You didn't use a uh, blind face tap. And you're right, I didn't. I used a through tap, but that's all I got. And I didn't get crazy with it when I ran it in there. Because I don't know how thin that casting is on the back side of that head. It could be paper thin. It could be two inches thick. I don't know. I wasn't going to risk it. I just ran them in. You could run them in almost every single one of them with, by hand. So they started feeling a little resistance in there. Then I just came in with a little ratchet there and maybe gave it one more turn, maybe a turn and a half. And then uh, backed them out, made sure I wasn't getting too much material on the tap. Most thing I was pulling out was carbon and grease and dirt. No, not any big metal shavings or anything like that. So that was good. <clears throat> but anywho I've got a couple more of these left I actually have a factory stud in the back here I'm actually going to leave this one out down the bottom because I can get to that you guys can't see it but I can get to that alignment dowel down there a lot easier with that lower stud out but what I was saying I have a factory stud in the back I'll probably replace it. Well, it's still in good shape. It's the same exact stud, but I'll replace it. I've got them. So I'll pull that, slap those in, and then I'll bring you back for pulling those alignment dowels. So I don't know how much of a chore that's going to be. 
Could be super easy. Might require a little heat. I guess we'll see. So I was going about thinking then how I was going to pull these laminate dowels. And I was like, I bet I have an extractor that size. So sure enough, this is an Ir Irwin 7 16 11 millimeter extractor. It barely fits on there. Barely is better than nothing. One size below is too small, one size up is too big. So I'm going to take a ball peen, tap on that a little bit. And I'm just going to give it a little bit of tension and see what it does. If it doesn't want to do anything, I'll bring in some heat and we will heat up that bugger. Before you ask, no, I wasn't hitting that thing with like Thor's hammer. Just nice, even, even taps. Pretty good luck with those Irwin extractors. They're pretty nice. Let's hopefully they do good for this. Oh yeah, they're gonna come right out. That's the way to do it. My biggest trick here is to kind of pull when you're rotating, because obviously these aren't threaded. You gotta find that happy spot. And I might get enough out that I can actually just grab onto it with a pair of vice grips a little easier. It's rotating super easy, so. Yeah, see I got quite a bit out. I got a pair of vice grips right here. I'll see if I can just snag on this girl. Yeah. Bingo, bango. One down, one to go. This back one, you can't see. I don't have a really good spot to put the camera. So, same process. Use the same extractor. Tap on it a little bit with a hammer. And we'll start backing it out and see if I can get it to move. Again, if I have to. I'll throw a little heat on it, but I really don't think we're going to have to, so never know what lies back here. Oh yeah, we're already turning. Not as easy though. All right, let's see what I can do with vice grips here. It's turning okay. It's not turning hard, hard. I'm just having, yeah, that ain't gonna work. So I will grab a bigger set of vice grips. Those uh, self-adjusting vice grips aren't really good for anything. I use them for, uh, believe it or not, I just use them for the cheek poker, the old bench grinder. Um, awesome for that, because you're always putting different size material. You're always cleaning different things. You bring over a handful of bolts. They're not all the same size. So you got that little self-adjusting vice grip. It's nice for that because you don't have to sit and adjust it 400,000 times. You just clamp it. If it's too loose, give it a little tension. There you go. I got that one too. So awesome. Well, 
I want to finish running these studs in. I haven't, uh, I just got them in there finger tight. Some of them went in a little easier than the others. I'm just guessing there's probably a little bit of schmoo in the holes, but I'll finish putting those in real quick. And remember I told you in a previous video, that corner of the blocks actually, or the head broke. Um, and it's taken, I don't know, probably 30% of the threads with it. Kind of worried about that guy. Um, I don't know what we're going to do. The torque rating is not super crazy. It's like 26 pounds for intake, 30 pounds for header. So we're not pulling, you know, 150 foot pounds on these studs. So it might be good enough to where it gets us by. But that might be another problem down the road where I have a guy has another exhaust leak. So I guess we'll address that when we get there. But like I said, I'm going to run these studs in real quick and clean that head surface. All the intake and exhaust port surfaces that, that face, clean that up. And then slide the new gasket on and we'll bring that intake over and slip him on so all right so i went ahead and got those studs installed all the way save yourself some time and just get a stud and it's a stud installer a set of them they're cheap you can you can get cheap ones super much of a lifesaver um anyway and don't if you can help it don't use these flange lock washers these are nice pieces um you don't want to double i mean obvious flange nut or flange lock nut sorry um you obviously got to use double nut if you don't have a uh, a stud installer so just grab a 3 8 by 24 because this side's going to be fine thread the head side's coarse thread uh grab a 3 8 by 24 um two of them you actually have four of them if you really need them from your old kit. Mine were pretty, or your old manifold setup, but mine were pretty rusty and gross. So I just went to the parts room. We've got nuts and bolts. I'm kind of, you know, grateful for that. Definitely grateful for that. Brought a couple of nuts and um, just ran those studs in. Just snugged them up. Didn't run them in super hard. Um, got those snugged up. And then I also installed the um intake header gasket so this is this is it um we've got uh studs installed nice thick heavy gasket really nice piece um i don't think we're gonna have any problems with that uh, like i said the studs are all ran in got those those um guide pins pulled which are these holes down here and right there. So, got those pulled. I don't know why they leave those provisions in that gasket. That's their gasket. It might not be their gasket, but I would assume that's their gasket. But uh, anyway, we're gonna grab that intake and we're gonna slip him on. And then we'll slip that header on and we'll see how it looks. I'm getting pretty excited. I wanted to show you this. Uh, these are these are what you're going to tie into for your cooling on each side, right there. Um, they just run along the bottom of this intake manifold right here. Keep uh, exhaust or intake temperatures down. Also, should help in the winter time too, keeping keeping a warm engine going. But again, this is a super super nice piece. Really really dig it. And we'll slip him on real quick. So these share share each other here. They share uh, studs, obviously. So they've got little grooves, and I'll bring you right there and show you. They've uh, let's see here. They got uh, little grooves that those studs just go around. And uh, that's kind of what holds them in until you get that flange washer or that big heavy washer and that flange locking nut. <clears throat> get that on there and what you do as per the instructions, you actually bend 
that washer over onto the intake and the header just for added um, grip or I don't know what you want to call it added added uh, clamping force so yeah so let's bring that header over that exhaust collector down there might be in the way so maybe I can pull him around a little bit or something I'll figure it out here in a second looking at this header I'm actually think I'm gonna put this on first and then put the manifold intake manifold on I think it'll go together a little bit better I should have thought of that first and but I don't know, I'm just getting excited here so actually might no we're definitely up against that old exhaust here It's not gonna let me. So I'm actually gonna end up cutting that off real quick. Obviously we're not using that factory exhaust anymore. It's got exhaust leaks in a couple spots anyway, but we got the dual outlet header, so I'm gonna cut that off, get it out of the way, and then uh, we'll slip this header back on. So I'm pretty sure I told my dad I'd never cut the exhaust off of this, being that it's original but uh yeah i think he might approve for what we had to do there just to get that out of the way um anyway i think we got plenty of room now to throw this on trouble here actually for the lineup this actually might need a little work oh shoot the bolts and studs are lining up fine it's just uh, a couple of these upper studs like that one right there Right here, there's no way, no way that'll go on. We're right up against the ear on it right now. The rest of them are pretty close. Maybe this one back here a little bit. But that's our big one right there is that one. I wonder, it ain't gonna make a shit of difference if I pull that stud and then install it again. I think we're still gonna be off. I can try it. I really would like to do that before I start hacking this thing up with a carbide bit, but sometimes you gotta do some minor trimming. It's all good. Yeah, that will not go. There's no way. No way. Just for laughs though. Let's pull that stud, see what it looks like. Cause this is the biggest one here that I'm hitting. I'm hitting somewhere right in here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I'm hitting damn near dead center of that stud. So it's not like much wiggling's gonna do. Wiggling's not gonna do much getting that in there. Might end up having to take a carbide bit and a die grinder and just kind of open that surface up a little bit. I don't know what the deal is. Nothing was made identical. I mean, we are humans. These weren't made by robots, so. The header's for sure. Maybe the CNC flange was, but. <laughs> I don't know. Pipe moves around when you're welding on it. Looks like we're also hitting that one there. Poor 
for sure. These top two upper studs is what I'm hitting. I'm actually gonna pull both of them. And if I gotta open those up a little bit, that's no big deal. I can do that pretty easily. And we'll get that over on the bench and I can show you how to do that without getting too crazy and wrecking anything. Who am I kidding? I wreck stuff every day. get this engine closed up. I'm tired of leaving it open. I know it's not getting hurt. It's just peace of mind. The guy leaves the shop door open and 45 mile an hour North Dakota wind comes through and blows half of that CRP field out inside this building. It's a good chance some of that's going right in that engine. think I was thinking the exhaust was going to be the worst part in the way oh yeah that son of a gun will not go that's interesting it's actually very interesting I don't know why I was looking at that when I was cleaning those threads up on the back of that head on that furthest rear stud it's almost like, because I didn't cut new threads in that by any means, but it's almost like when that was milled, or when that was threaded, they came in at an angle. So, the engine's sitting this way, stud needs to come in at a 90 degree angle. Well, I'm kind of kicked off at a 45, not a 45, but I'm kicked off a 90. So, I'm having trouble with that flange, that back corner flange going through that, that eye, that opening. So, other than that, we're really close. I wonder if a guy should just take that out. I mean, I've got three of them out now, the back three. I only got one in the back right now, so. I really don't want to keep pick, pulling these out, but I'm kind of forced to, really. Could be another reason why I was having a, well, no, because the stock exhaust manifold came off really nice. I was thinking, you know, well, maybe this was a problem from a long time ago, you know, still with factory parts, but it came out too good. But I also wasn't pulling studs either. There was two studs on this whole thing, which I'm sure there's supposed to be more, but I was pulling bolts out, so I had tons of room to play around with. Wasn't slipping it past a two inch stud coming out of the block, so, or the head. That could have been all the difference in the world right there. I don't know. It's not off much if it's off any, like I was saying. It's kind of angled back towards the firewall, just a smidgen. Not a lot, but enough to where I'm looking at it and I'm going, ah, eh, don't look right. Like I said, I didn't cut new threads in this head by any chance. It went in way too easy. The, the tap went in way too easy, so I know I didn't cut new threads into it. That's what we want. All right, so first glance I'm looking, there is no way that I will get this stud in. No way. And there's no way I'll get this back one in, and I guarantee I won't get this other one back in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this face up here. And I'll bring in here and show you.
So I'm hitting right here on this lip. See how that is cutting about half of those threads off? So what I'll do is I'll pull this, put it in the vise, and I'll take a carbide bit in my die grinder and I'll just open that up. I'll walk that out a little bit. I don't really want to mess with the tip or the corners here. Just open up that body. And uh, I'll have to do the same for that one back there. And then also that bottom hole down there. Um, not a big deal. This would take a guy with a rat tail file maybe half an hour and that's pushing it. So if you're intimidated by that, you know, you don't need air tools. So far I've used no power tools minus my drill to clean up the head surface, but um, yeah, you don't have to go buy an air compressor just to have a carbide bit. You can take a, a rasp tail file and just work that out and get that opened up. But unfortunately, that opens up a little bit more can of worms than I want to tackle tonight. So I'm going to get cleaned up, put this stuff back in, plug my head back up. And we're going to go for round two in the next day or so. I'm trying to get you uh, as much content as I can. I'm just struggling with work schedule and, and uh, family time at home. So we'll uh, catch you next time.